Today, we are talking about AR-15s, the scary black rifle. Hi, I'm Jeremy, this is MS Videos. And AR-15s are a hot topic, we're gonna to talk about it. I'm going to kind of show you what a uh, California compliant AR-15 looks in two different configurations. I'm also gonna go over just your basic understanding of an AR-15, the typical parts, the names of them, how to take one down, clean it, how to put it back together. I'm not gonna go into the detail part of the cleaning, but just how to get to the parts to clean them um, and all your just little features. There's a lot to know about an AR-15, so I'm gonna try and keep it short and to the point, and here we go. All right, up first is going to be a build that I did uh, with a Aero Precision lower and upper. Uh, this is a Thunder Ranch Special Edition, so you'll notice it's got some cutouts in here. It just lightens the weight, makes it look kind of cool. Um, this is not a go-to-war gun. This is a have fun at the range gun. It's lightweight. Um, I've got it kitted out to my specs. To start off with, I'm running a Ledesma grip to push this part of the webbing of my hand higher than the exposed part of the trigger, making it a legal uh, grip in California. In this configuration, you cannot have certain things. You cannot have an adjustable stock. It has to be fixed in place. You also cannot run a forward vertical grip and you cannot have a flash hider. If you do not have those, you can have a detachable magazine. And if you are running 30 round magazines in California, you can legally in this configuration, as long as you legally obtain them. And what I mean by that is you can't go to the store in another state and buy one and say, oh, I got it legally. It has to be for lawful purposes, not intended to break the law. If California has a law, you can't go outside of California to circumvent it. This one I have set up with a primary arms magnified optic. This is a dedicated three power optic. And to the side, I'm running a one o'clock uh, red dot. And uh, this one is the Holosun SCS set up for a Glock footprint. Um, it co-witnesses uh, very nicely with sights if I was running them on here, but I don't because I like nothing in my eye line. That's why I say this is not a go to war gun. It looks really clean through here with the chevron and then if i need to engage targets at a closer range say 10 yards 30 yards i just simply rotate the rifle and i've got my dot there uh, i have this zeroed at 100 yards and this zeroed at 30 yards uh, i run a strap on here i have it ranger banded up so that it's out of the way but if i need to i can just yank it and it comes off and get to it quickly but i keep it tied up so it's out of the way I'm running PMAG 30 rounders with the window so I can see how much ammo I have. This one has a Ballistic Advantage 223 wild barrel in 16 inches before the break. I didn't go with a 14.5 because when I bought this one, I got a good deal on it and I was like, eh, I'll deal with the extra two inches. Running an S1 handguard. I like it because it has these grooves on top, keeps it light, keeps it comfortable. I'm running a Strike Industries little finger stop here. I'm running a JP Enterprises muzzle brake, and uh, this is set up in carbine length. Uh, I am running a Strike Industries buffer tube on this one. Uh, it's just, it's a cool look. I like it, and it was lightweight. Running an ambidextrous safety on here. I am running a, a Radian charging handle. They're very nice charging handles. They're one of my favorites. This one has a CMC drop-in trigger, and it has a Strike Industries extended bolt catch right here. So you have a little bit more room to get your finger on it. Plus it has this little groove on the bottom. Hopefully you can see that clearly. Um, and I'm running an ambidextrous magazine release so I can drop the mag from either side. Let me get that strap out of the way real quick. I can simply reach up with one hand and strip the magazine out. Uh, but I still have my control and my magazine release on this side and I'm running an Odin Works extended mag release. And next up we have the Daniel Defense DDM4 V9. This one is also California compliant, but it has all of your scary features. This is an adjustable buttstock. I have a regular pistol grip on it. I have a flash hider. Let's see if you can see that there. Uh, I have a, I do not run a vertical pistol grip in the front on this up front. I personally just don't use them. I like finger stops better, so that one doesn't really apply to me. This one has what looks like to be a 30 round mag but it's fixed in place. You can't really use it. 
and it has a 10 rounder that looks like a 30. That's why I have the orange tape on it so I don't accidentally insert the wrong mag into the wrong gun and commit a felony. So this one, like I said, is the Daniel DDM 4V9. It's pretty much stock except for a extended bolt catch here. I like having that just for more finger placement, easier to get onto it fast. This one has a breech charging handle from Aero Precision. It's nice because it's ambidextrous. And this is what I mean. I'm gonna show you real quick about having that extended thing is I don't have to try and find that little tab. I can just reach up and hit anywhere and it will drop the bolt. AR mag lock, this is the California compliant modification. If you look here, there's this bar that comes up, touches the upper receiver. This magazine button is blocked out because of that. You have to pull this rear takedown pin out that separates the upper and lower receiver. And now this is free to open and you can strip your mag out. I have added the bipod on the end for mag pull just because I do shoot this one from a bench a lot. This is my, if I needed to go anywhere and do anything gun, this will do it. This I do shoot at five to 600 yards pretty regularly. And last, last week or the week before, Thanksgiving weekend, I took this out and I was shooting at 400 yards. I uh, put a few hundred rounds through it, knocked the cobwebs off, you know how it is sit around for a while. I am running a thousand lumen stream light on the front and I have my strap. Uh, this is a Blue Force Gear Vickers Sling. I really like them because they're easy to adjust with this little rip cord right here. And that makes it quick. You can suck it up nice and tight and you just pull that little thing and it drops down. All right, now we're gonna talk about gas systems. The differences, what they mean. There are four basic lengths of your gas system on an AR-15. You're gonna have your most common, which is your carbine length, which is what these two rifles are set up as. Um, and that is this position here, which is gonna give you, it's roughly 10 inches, give or take a little tiny bit. I don't know the exact measurement off the top of my brain um, of your gas tube. Uh, that is going to differ based off of the length. If you have a pistol length, it's gonna be a couple inches shorter. If you have a mid length, it's gonna be a couple inches longer. And if you have a rifle length, which is the longest, it's gonna be out even farther. When you're using those different systems, you have to change your buffer weight to match or your gun's not gonna work properly or it's going to have too much recoil, not enough recoil, not enough pressure to cycle the bolt properly. Um, I run most of mine in either pistol length for my AR pistols or in carbine length. If I'm building something at rifle length, I'm probably gonna use an AR-10 uh, and go to something with more power. Most AR-15s are going to be ran in a gas system like this, direct impingement. There are a handful out there that run in a uh, piston system, which would be like your LWRCs or a couple of other high-end manufacturers that specifically make their gun to run on a piston setup. Uh, pistons can run longer without getting as dirty inside the chamber, uh, but they're harder to clean. So there's a, there's a plus and a minus there. A lot of people say, once you go to a piston system, you'll never go back to direct impingement. I've tried, I went back to direct impingement, just that's what I'm used to and I like it. So for this next part, I'm just going to do a, a quick field strip on an AR-15. This is how you would clean all your parts. Uh, I'm not going to go through the actual process of cleaning everything because that's really self-explanatory and I'll probably do another video later just about the cleaning process but this is just how you would get your gun apart and put it back together so you could clean it. Uh, start off, make sure the gun is clear of any ammunition. You do that every time you touch any weapon. I know it's been said a thousand times, but I'm gonna say it again. So drop your magazine out of the firearm. This one is clear. Pull your charging handle back so you can see that. And you check your chamber, make sure there's nothing in there. I like to do it three times just to make sure because if there was something stuck in there, that extractor could grab it and pull it out. Uh, with this particular gun, teardown is really simple. Uh, you just push your rear takedown pin, and that's why it's called the takedown pin, so you can take it down. You push that forward into the gun, flip up the gun over, grab this side, pull it out. That separates the upper and lower receiver, like so. Once these two are apart, you could do a real quick strip and just pull your charging handle back, unlock it from the upper receiver. That's gonna pull your bolt carrier group out and your charging handle out. Hope this camera's picking this up good. At this point, you could just pull this back, take your bolt carrier group out of the firearm, take your charging handle out. Now I'm gonna turn the camera, I'm gonna turn the gun upside down so you can see it from this camera up top. This piece has these two little ears right here. Let me show that on this one. 
those ears have a groove machined into the upper receiver. Okay, now I'm gonna take the front pin out. Pop that, that goes out. Now you can take your upper receiver off the firearm. In this configuration, I have a strap on it. Uh, so I'm gonna need to take that off so that I can access everything else. Pull a little release, and now that is clear, and my lower is separate. At this point, I'm just gonna set the lower off to the side for a minute, and I'm gonna focus on the upper. Inside here, I'm gonna try and get the lighting good. There is these two machined grooves. My finger's right in front of them. Let me grab something to point with. Right here. Hopefully that is visible. I'm gonna bring it over to this camera real quick. Get the light on there. Inside here, these two grooves, there's one on each side. Try and keep this pointed on there. The lighting, I'm not getting the lighting right, but I've just got that little tip of the um, pin right on there. That is where these two ears line up to you. So when you put this together, you put it in, you line up those two grooves and then those ears drop down, sorry, and your charging handle will line into the groove. And then at this point, you just push it forward ever so slightly so it stays in place and doesn't fall out. Make sure that your keyway is pushed forward uh, right here on the bolt carrier group so that it will go in place. Put it upside down so that the top of the bolt carrier group lines up into the inside of the charging handle and push it forward. Lock it into place and you've reassembled the upper. At this point, you just take your lower, line up your front pivot pin, push it in. There's a detent on there, so you gotta wiggle it just a little bit. Now this is connected. You can close it down, push your rear takedown pin in, and you're fully reassembled. Function check it. Everything works. And at this point, you'd be good to reassemble uh, your strap, put it back on, load a magazine and take it out and fire it. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. That was the basic overview, understanding, and definition, explanation of the AR-15. We have more videos coming and planned. We really appreciate you guys stopping in and hoping that you guys enjoy the content. Make sure to leave comments. It really helps us understand what the audience has to say about us. You know, feedback is always great to have. And check out another video. Thanks guys.